Friend, the question I have been asked most about the current situation in America is this one. What can we actually do about it? Not three years from now, but right now. What can we do right now? Good morning, folks. I'm Troy Wilson. Let me first thank you for taking this 10 minutes out of your valuable time to join us for worship and renewal of the Spirit. Neighbor, one does not have to scroll very far on any social media these days to see that most of America is at odds with our current government. Not only are we at odds with our government, but we are also at odds with one another. Nations around the world are at odds. Families are at odds with each other. Co-workers, teachers, law enforcement, the medical field. Not to leave out, most races are at odds with each other. Have you noticed this lately? Any person who gets behind the wheel of an automobile is automatically at odds with every other driver on the road. Amen, you know it's true. Friend, the mindset of our nation and the world in general is exactly where Satan wants it to be. As the old saying goes, we are prime for the picking. Now, back to the question as to what we as Christians should be doing about it. The only thing we as Christians can do, pray for God to send circumstances which will cause a new mindset to be installed in those who don't know him by way of the Holy Spirit. Now that might sound simplistic or far-fetched or not likely. Maybe you, like so many others, have been praying for impeachment or some other form of removal of the current president and his administration. However, whoever was behind putting this current president in place did a brilliant job of protecting him by having appointed a line of incompetent, ungodly successors. The farther down the list we look, we find those who are even less more and more anti-American and even more ungodly than the current president. As a Southern boys say, replacing a copperhead snake with a rattlesnake ain't going to help anything. We as Christians must pray for a new mindset to be installed in these people who claim to be our elected leaders, either willingly or through his miraculous circumstances. It's our only hope, folks. He did it for the children of Israel. He is the same God now as then, and he will do it for us. Amen. Somebody say amen. He had to blind Saul on his way to Damascus in order to change his mindset. Let me read it to you. Very short. It's in the Holy Bible. Acts 9, verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, let me skip down to verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Friend, this is a new mindset of all mindsets. Saul goes from Saul on his way to murder Christians to Paul, author of more books than anyone else in the New Testament. Now, I know one might say, well, Brother Troy, that was back then, in, you know, in the Bible time. You don't see people with new mindset these days. Oh, but we do, my friend. At the age of 11 years old, I watched Governor George Wallace and the Stand in the Schoolhouse Door incident live on TV. Governor George Wallace was governor of Alabama. He was in opposition to school integration. The law was imposed by the federal government. He was going to have to obey it. It was June 11, 1963. This action occurred in the doorway of Foster Auditorium at the University of Alabama and was intended to prevent the enrollment of two black students, James Hood and Vivian Malone, into what was called a white University. Wallace's stand on segregation would plague him politically for the rest of his life. 
although he had a change of heart, a completely different mindset on how he viewed race and segregation. He ran a final successful campaign for governor in the 1980s and won the election in part because of the blacks that voted for him. Wallace even befriended Hood later in life. Wallace also ran for president, even carrying some northern states. While campaigning for president in Maryland on May 15, 1972, Arthur Bremer shot Wallace and three others. Wallace's condition was life-threatening for several weeks and left him permanently paralyzed from the waist down. On June 8, 1972, Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress and one of Wallace's opponents for the Democrat presidential nomination, famously visited him in the hospital to wish him well. In 1973, now follow this close, folks. In 1973, George Wallace, the same governor, which stood in the doorway to prevent blacks from entering into the University of Alabama 10 years before, participated in congratulating Terry Points, a black student, as Alabama's 1973 homecoming queen. Amen. Even though he was at the end of his career with nothing left to gain but a clear conscience with man and God, George Wallace called several civil rights leaders and apologized for his original stance against integration. Friend, I don't know if the change in the mindset of George Wallace was gradual or instantaneous. Maybe like Saul. I don't know if it was because he was shot and almost died or if it was because of his visit from Shirley Chisholm. What I do know is history will reflect a man who died with a completely different mindset from when he first came on stage until he made his exit. Folks, there's no secret to what God can do. Should not that be our prayer, friend, for God to change the mindset, especially for those in leadership who do not know and obey his ways? Friend, name calling won't do it. Wishing harm won't do it. Impeachment, in this case, won't do it. Hoping the election will be overturned didn't do it. Only God, through a specific set of circumstances, can and will change the mindset of wicked men who don't obey His will. Let us pray. Father, we know You are the same God who sent ten plagues upon Egypt to change the mindset of the mighty Pharaoh a mindset to let your people go. God, you are a mighty God who have always come through for your people. And we know, dear Father, that you are about to do it again. We are praying and believing, dear Father, that you already have a plan in the works to change the mindset of those who have turned their back on you and this nation of those who believe in you. In Jesus' holy name and until we meet again, amen.